Hello there, you once more welcome to the Glory Realm Devotion Moment. God has something wonderful for you. It's a glorious day. I sense that God is going to come across to you and bless you beyond your imagination. I just want your faith to come alive and I want you to let Jesus be Lord and Savior. Why Lord and Savior? When you ask Him to be your Lord, no other thing can lord it over you. No other dominion can prevail against you. When you ask him to be your savior, you are delivered from the power of sin and the oppression of the powers of darkness. There is the reality of the power of darkness and the power of sin. When the church in Thessalonica received Jesus through the preaching of Paul and his fellows, there was a great transformation upon their lives. And that's what we've been looking at for some days now. First Thessalonians chapter number 1. Yesterday we read from verse number 8. There was so mighty a transformation in the lives of these people in Thessalonica that Paul did not need to do much work wherever he went and people have encountered these people in Thessalonica. Now, wherever he went, there's this report. It says, but... Everywhere the report has gone forth of your faith in God. The report has gone forth. That's verse number 8. The report has gone forth of their faith in God. Not only that, of their leaning of their entire personality on the person of Jesus. In complete trust and confidence in his power. They had complete trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. In other words, they had no confidence in their own way of getting things done. They waited and sought after the leading and the way the Holy Spirit would want it done. And so they consulted the Word of God and they did it according to what the Lord wanted them to do. You see, the reason why we don't see much of miracles, much of the manifestation of the power and the presence of God is simply because we don't have people who are truly believers. We have people who are churchgoers. To be religious is not the same as being believers. True believers are able to put to work that which God has made available for them. These people relied so much on the personality of the Holy Spirit and also they had complete confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. Absolute confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. And it is so we find that we never need to tell people anything further about it. All right? The people, see, the joy of any true servant of God is to see the people he is preaching to manifest what he is preaching. Now, if the people who are members of the congregation where he ministers as a servant of God are actually leaving the scripture. He need not go to their homes to do so much work because there will be manifestations. And that's the kind of life God wants you to live. In your home, in your family, in your neighborhood, wherever you step in the place of business, in your office where you got a job, he wants there to be so much of Jesus made manifest. And that's when people actually take our faith serious. Most of the time, people don't take our faith serious, but um, simply because what they see is religion, not a relationship, not a manifestation of the wisdom, power, and goodness of God. He said, these people have something going. And then in verse number 9, he went on to say more about them. And then he says, for they themselves volunteer testimonies, testimony concerning us. For they themselves volunteer testimony concerning us, telling what an entrance we had among you, and how you turned to God from your idols to serve a God who is alive and true and genuine. That is impact. They met the, 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 the apostles, received the gospel, and there was a massive transformation. So it is now the people who used to know who they were 
as idol worshippers saying, man, you people did something when you went preaching there. You transformed their life. Can somebody say something like that about you? Since you have been in church, is there anything tangible that somebody can say about your life? And let's go on to verse number 10. And verse number 10 went on to tell us, And how you look forward to and await the coming of his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who personally rescues and delivers us out of and from the wrath, bringing punishment, which is coming upon the impenitent and draws us to himself, investing us with all the privileges and rewards of the new life in Christ the Messiah. See, you don't meet Jesus and you are left the same. You meet him and your whole life is revolutionized. Their focus became heavenward. Now, it became obvious that they were delivered from the wrath that is to come. And the unbelievers were testifying. The non-Christians were the ones talking about the fact that so much transformation has taken place. Have you truly given your life to Christ? Is it your Lord and personal Savior? If you claim to be a Christian, where is your testimony? How many persons have received Jesus because of you? How many people know what true Christianity is because of you? If you have not had that, please repent again. Rededicate your life to him. If you've never done it before, ask him to do it. And I'm telling you, the change will come and people will soon testify of you. Till I come your way again by the grace of God, I'm Ego Louis Yegbibu. God bless you.